this is Gila. In our house, we have several cats. One is male and whole. His sister is female and has been spayed, so we don't have endless kittens. Having actually watched cats have sex, frankly, I got the impression it was more like rape. The male holds the female down by biting her neck. It's very quick with a yell at the end by the female because a cat's penis has barbs on it. I'm so glad I'm not a cat. Mm. Our male cat likes to try to show his dominance by biting his sister's neck and holding her down in exactly the same way, but without the actual sex taking place. So why am I talking about cats and sex? Because today I want to talk about rape and abuse in human beings and the animal domination I'm describing in cats is what sexual harassment, rape and abuse are all truly about. Power and deliberate humiliation. But in humans, of course, sex is about so much more. We are so much more complex. There's the emotional connection and also a spiritual connection. We have the ability as human beings to exercise self-control. Not always easy, of course, but there are very good reasons why most religious paths insist that sex needs to take place within a committed, long-term and loving relationship. And why, when it's not, it can be deeply damaging emotionally and psychologically. Actual sexual harassment can take many forms. When it happened to me, 30 years ago now, it turned out the perpetrator had a very sick mind, was an expert on manipulation and got off on teasing me sexually and essentially raping my mind, slowly and deliberately tearing my psyche to pieces. In my case, he actually made a mistake. While I had no way of stopping him at the time or the immense damage he did to my life, he couldn't actually break me. And once I'd escaped the situation and realised uh, what had actually happened to me consciously, I spoke out against what had been done to me. But what it took me to overcome this utter nightmare for years afterwards is indescribable. And, well, deep scars remain as they do in any other abuse survivor. I've been determined to live life to the full and to embrace the fact that the best revenge is a life well lived. As a human being entitled to be treated with respect, I'm certainly not going to be defined by the sick fantasies of an evil and frankly pathetic sadist whom I was unlucky enough to encounter three decades ago. And it's not only women who can be destroyed by abuse. I remember many years ago now talking to a man who'd been destroyed psychologically by another man. And he said he'd learned as a result always to keep the door open in a one-on-one -on -one office meeting. I remember a male student who'd been raped physically, who sat there shaking uncontrollably when I happened to visit him a day or so afterwards. I only found out later from someone else what had actually happened to him. He was a very nice guy and I sincerely hope he was able to recover well enough to have a very good life in the future. Now, as an abuse survivor myself, I will tell you that personally I do believe Anita Hill and her allegations against Judge Clarence Thomas from around the same time as my own horrendous treatment. But I don't believe Kavanaugh's accusers, or at least that Kavanaugh is the man who may have done what was alleged. Nevertheless, Me Too is no substitute for the rights of everyone to receive a fair trial. Though, of course, it's sadly very difficult to prove physical rape, let alone abuse. And perpetrators are always bound to deny it and to blame the victims instead. And there's no way personally I could have proven in court or even begun to describe at all adequately the deep psychological horrors that I was subjected to by one of my lecturers who actually owed me a duty of care by virtue of his position. Sadly, this particular man has been involved in tutoring students more recently since this time, 
Although he's now a lot older with, I believe, a debilitating medical condition, and hopefully he'll have far less success in attracting further victims. Although undoubtedly he will be more careful as well. But the question remains, where does the duty of care end and the rights of an abuser begin? Certainly, I was told subsequently that the vile perpetrator who was employed at the university where I studied, who did what he did to me, knowing there were problems with him regarding female students, but he was employed because he was brilliant and useful. You try fighting a brilliant but totally twisted mind intent on destroying you and tell me how useful such a person truly is. He should clearly never have been employed in the first place. Which brings us to the subject of the appalling grooming gangs in Britain. It is absolutely untenable that these gangs were allowed to continue torturing and destroying young lives for many years, or that any of their victims should have been denied justice simply because the police and other authorities were scared of being labelled as racists. Let's not beat around the bush. While abusers can and do come from any and every society and belief system, most of these perpetrators in the grooming gangs in Britain have been Muslims because abuse of non-Muslim girls, sexual slavery, is allowed under Islamic ideology as set out in the Quran and Hadith. Yes, slowly destroying the lives of children, some as young as 11 or 12, torturing and humiliating in the most degrading way possible, is supposedly sanctioned by the one loving creator of us all, according to Muhammad, who, along with his early followers, is recorded in Islamic sources as having done the same. That is just vile and utter evil, and is no part whatsoever of any path to God that I can personally recognise. So, where are all the feminists outraged by these teachings in the Quran? Where are all the public figures of power and influence naming the evil contained within the Quran with regard to the treatment of non-Muslims for what it truly is? I say to all people in the police, all those involved in politics and community relations, all those in positions of authority in universities and other institutions, Stop enabling abusers, whoever they are, to flourish by your cowardice. How dare you? And to imams everywhere, how would you feel if it was your daughter or even your son having their very psyche, the most precious inner being, slowly torn to pieces by such evil? Rape and abuse, sexual slavery, destroys precious lives. And it is utterly obscene that any religion today permits such vile and evil crimes to be committed. With enough public outcry, things can start to be changed for the better. And all those of us who care about human rights, especially for the most vulnerable members of our society, children. It's surely up to all of us to do what we can to achieve this. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day, take care. Goodbye.